Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be hopping in the boat with Brian Brosdahl to chase walleyes. And he's gonna put a few fish in the boat like this beauty right here. And also, he's gonna share some tips that'll help you catch more walleyes this summer. And first things first, he's gonna talk about his jigging cadence. When I'm jigging, using a jig and a minnow for walleyes, I always jig a cadence that relies on the atmosphere. So right now we have clouds coming in, we have a little bit of ripple in the water. It was glassy earlier. So I'm gonna pitch that thing out and start by ripping it just to see if they're there. You wanna get their attention. So I'm using an eighth ounce, I'm at nine feet of water. I'm gonna let it hit the bottom. My line just kicked towards me, so I'm gonna do a sweep. So that was about a two and a half foot sweep. Then I pause, let it hit the bottom. Then I do a couple hops because you want the minnow to look injured. And then I'll sweep it again, let it hit the bottom. And they'll be swimming behind it. You just gotta imagine that, that critters behind there following that bait. So now I want them to catch it because you could out jig them where they, they'll give up. It depends on, you know, in the spring, they just got through spawning, so they don't have the energy. In the summer, they'll grab anything because they have to feed or they'll die. So adjust your jigging accordingly. Now one of the things that makes Brian so effective when he's on the water chasing down walleyes is the fact that he's really effective with his electronics and the new live imaging, live sonar is no exception. He's great with it. And I thought it'd be interesting if he walked through a little bit of his setup and how he likes to use specifically the ice bundle while he's fishing in his boat. You know what I, what I really love about using Mega Live is I, I left it on the ice fishing box here because I can move it around the boat. There's these little brackets that go on the rails of my Lund. So I could put it on that side if someone wants to use it over here and they could check it out. You could just kind of spin it around to see where the fish are or the weeds. So it saves you a little bit of time casting. And I just witnessed something over here. There's a, a fish in that where I casted. So it's sitting on the bottom and I'm gonna see if I can get it. But the nice thing here, it's portable. And I can wire it in to the big screens really easy, but I want this, I can move it around the boat. And it's a nice size screen and it's on a, on a control handle here so I can steer it. So I'm noticing I'm not the only one doing this. This is really a trend to make your this unit portable so you can move it around the boat and you can take it in with you. I mean, I don't want to leave this in my boat overnight. I love this unit. <laughs> And it's not a pain in the butt in the winter when you gotta rewire everything no. back up. No, when I'm, when I'm ready to go in the winter, I just switch this back to the old pole and I'm ready to go on the ice. So, and what, when I'm driving, I'm facing this way, but I turn around, I have it here. If they wanna use it, it's over there. And I just let it sit on my pod here. And it's, it's a nice screen and it's the direction I'm casting. So I can check to make sure there's fish here. And, and when they are here, you could point and make sure you kind of get in that that same area or how far. Right now there's a, a school of fish moving through at 20 to 25. So I'm facing this way. I'm gonna throw it out there. A little bit past them, you don't wanna drop it right on them. And they're slowly moving through. They look like bouncing balls. There were like 12 of them right there. Yeah, so, and they weren't near the bottom. So if, if they don't hit the deep V, I might throw a drop shot at them. I'll have to see. Bobbers work, but uh, bobbers are floaty and uh, move on where drop shot stays in place. Now we're gonna take a really quick break so Bro can stick another big walleye. What do we got, Brian? Uh, Is this maybe a good one? Uh, this might be a big one here. Um, they can really bulldog, especially when they got the energy. They get tired after their spawn. Oh, what a blast. Love seeing them down in that clear water. Here he is. Come here, baby. I'm gonna net you. That's a nice one. Get her in so I can get her back. Come here. <laughs> That's a lengthy, not super fat. You know, they spawned only a month and a half, two months ago. So that's a, but that's a really, 
really nice fish. We're gonna let that go, and I like to swim them a little bit. There she goes. Back to terrorize shiners. That was fun. Next up, Bro is gonna demonstrate how he rigs minnows so that he loses less minnows and also catches more fish. All right, I love it. You can see where they're at and cast them, but oh, that's a walleye. That would be an eater if we were keeping any today. He hit that deep V and really thumped it. Uh, I like using shiners, but fatheads work great, rainbows. I'm gonna let that puppy go. Fun though, seeing that technology seems to make things easier, but you still need a great jig head. And that's a deep V. And I'm gonna double hook my shiner. You've probably seen this before. And I know Nick likes this, everybody likes this. But uh, the old uh, Canadian style was to come out the gill. I don't do that. I come out the chest because I, I jig through rough areas like weeds. Stick the collar in, turn, and roll it on. But leave that hook underneath there. So now you got a weedless, deep V, shinered jig. Let's see if we can get him again. Oh, I don't want to cast too much, so let me find him on here. Oh, there they are. I'll have to pitch it right there. Just like that. Now, I noticed they're about two, three feet off the bottom. I still want to hit the bottom. That's that's your starting point. And then hop. And then do it again because you're going up past them in their, their view. And then I start. Oh, I, well, I don't have to start that, I guess. This is a smaller one. Boy, he hit it with anger. This is a lot of fun. All right. Come on over here, buddy. Oh, it's one of those. You ever notice that some of these areas that have some of the bigger bigger walleyes, you might see more pike or anything like that? Oh, yeah. There's there's just more pike. There's uh, There's been good spawn, good hatches in past years, and uh, they have their, their part to play, so they can go back and scare the fish but he was right in with the walleyes so they're all together so it tells you they're not as afraid as you think they would be they're kind of keep their little short distance and uh, we'll double hook this because there are some weed stalks and I don't want to hook them so here we go I'll go in the mouth again I come out the chest not the gill put it in turn and roll it it's like a rubber worm now I could pull that through weeds and everything. And it's still lively. It's not going to live as long as if you use the gill. If I was fishing fish with no weeds around and pitching to them in an open playing field, I might go through the gill or just through the nose. But right now, it's about right there. Uh, so getting down there and being able to jig it and snap it, you hook it through the lips. It ain't going to last long. You hook it through the gill and back in, it ain't going to last long. It's going to curve. I want that shiner straight. And that little wire holds them, helps hold them. It seems like there's kind of like a tough spot underneath. Yeah, there's a tough spot. It hooks in the in the mouth underneath that, that little barb that we use to hold plastics on there. It works great in minnows. And on fatheads, it really sticks them in there. I want my, my minnow straight up and down. Sideways is okay if you're fishing above the fish in super deep water. But when you're fishing uh, multiple casts with a minnow, Let's face it, some of these minnows are like 90 cents to $2 a piece, depending on from shiners to red tails. You don't want to waste them. You want to get a fish on them. Minnow prices have been absolutely bonkers this year, and honestly, I'm not sure that it's going to be changing anytime soon. So for that reason, I'm rigging up my jigs the same way that Bro is to save money and catch more fish. But anyway, now Bro's going to talk a little bit about finding fish and fishing away from the crowd. You know, right nowadays we have Lake Master maps that you can see where everything's at. But some spots really get hit hard, especially in big waters. So I like to use, you know, use the high detail to find well, that's a new good spots. One. Oh, this is I'll a big scoop fish. that one for you. Oh, thanks, Nick. Oh, yeah. Try not to get stuck on anything. Look at that beast. But the, some of the, oh, oh, he's gone. Oh no! <laughs> you know what? I should have put the camera down. That, that's all right. That that thing was a hog. But it was just fun having it on for a little bit. We've had pike, 
and uh, little abrasions happen, but that was a beautiful fish. But he, the real key thing is you don't have to fish in a crowd. The fish don't all go to one area. But if you're in a hurry, it's a good way to go is to find something similar to that wherever they're going and find it on your own. But you just simply understand what they're what they're feeding on. They're feeding on shiner minnows. So where do shiner spawn? In the shallows, on sand with a little bit of weeds and grass around, and the walleyes are gonna be there. So find your own area if you have the time, or you could hire a guide, I know a good one. Uh, but outside of that, with Lake Master and the details that, that are out there, you could really find your own spots and catch, almost catch big fish like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Now there's a really interesting predator-prey balance that goes on in lakes when you're chasing down fish and more often than not like those predator fish are going to be wherever the hottest forage is so earlier in the spring you know depending on where you live uh, the shiner spawn is kind of a big deal where the shiners move up shallow and they spawn and the walleyes follow close behind and start chewing and on this particular spot we were actually up in an area that I would consider to be more of like a shallow spring fishing area where there's rocks and some sparse weeds um, somewhere where you would be like just a little bit after opener but the reason why that spot was good was because there was a recent shiner spawn and the walleyes had followed the shiners up there now a little bit later in the year when the bugs start hatching that becomes a really big uh, factor and that's kind of the order of how that works. The shiners spawn first, the bugs start to hatch later, and that moves those fish around like crazy. But anyway, that's something to consider, and Bro's gonna talk a little bit about that right now. Well, you know, the real thing is, the forage is the most important part of the chase. Knowing what they're feeding on will help you find the fish. If they're feeding on shiners, they're gonna be on shallow flats with a little bit of car or other vegetation. If they're feeding on crayfish, they're gonna be on similar food shelves, but they're gonna like a little bit of gravel and rocks, and then bugs, steep breaks near the main basin where the bugs are billowing out of the mud. Okay, I'm gonna get this baby back. Well, that's about all we got for you in this video. Special thanks to Bro for spilling the good walleye catching information and also showing us some big fish. And uh, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because we have a lot more awesome content coming this summer. And until then, we will see you in the next one.